Um, Lukas, nonlinear FAA, what's nonlinear in the first place? I mean, we're surrounded by nonlinearity. Humans are most likely to think in a more linear way. So nonlinearity, maybe it's not in, in our nature, I would say. Can you explain what is nonlinearity in the first place? Okay, so, uh, well, this can be a very broad term. To, to bring it back to what I do in FEA and design, basically. Um, I would say that the split between linear and nonlinear for many years was what humanity can and cannot do. And strictly speaking, most of the things that surround us react in a nonlinear way that we can more or less foresee, but it was very difficult to calculate. So... For instance, if you have a metal element, you can bend it in a way that it will yield and it will just stay bended. Like you can do it with a fork, mm. oh, right? But it's surprisingly difficult, or at least it was surprisingly difficult in the 70s to calculate that. You could, you could calculate what would happen if the fork was indestructible in some sense, and you could calculate that. But if you would actually want to apply damage to it, it's very difficult in some sense. So this meant that for many, many years, engineers designed stuff in a linear way, being aware that things are nonlinear, but not having the tools to properly analyze it. Because like, you know, currently your fridge has more computing powers than the mainframes in the 70s, right? So uh, it's actually not surprising that they didn't have the tool set. Like the algorithms were there, but like computing anything took like weeks and engineering rarely have this much time, right? So we got used to thinking in a linear way, but somehow along the process, we lost, I feel, the, this understanding that things are really nonlinear and people start to defend linear uh, way of calculating stuff um, as the one that was always correct, as the one that we should do. And when computers got better, algorithms got better, software develop that was developed is stronger now, we can actually do the nonlinear calculations as we wanted way back then. Now, like, it's not as obvious because we have decades of designing things in linear way and engineering is a very conservative thing in life. And it should be like engineers should innovate and think about other things. But there is also an argument saying we've been building ships this way since 1300 or something. And like, let's leave it like that because they float. Right. So by nature, engineering design tends to be conservative in some sense. So the adoption of change and using those possibilities we have now is just taking a bit longer. But I think since last decade, it, it really speed up. And now you can find nonlinear design uh, starting to be popular and people realizing what it gives you. So essentially what nonlinear is that is that the materials that can be damaged, like steel can yield, uh, and, and like viscoelastic materials are nonlinear, and a lot of weird things can happen to material. That's one of those things, right? Like if you do linear analysis, you, you just can't analyze it this way. And then geometry is nonlinear. That's like a silent killer of FEA because things can buckle, they can en enter membrane state. In in essence, you think that if you press, something will just shorten in some sense. And in real life, weird things can happen to things that you press. They can behave in a very bizarre way. And nonlinear geometry allows you to see this weird behavior because so far engineers wouldn't be able to analyze it. So they had to be aware of it up front to know, oh, I'm expecting a weird behavior. I need to know how the behavior will be like just to analyze it. So that would be the two main topics. And there is a beautiful argument if I analyze two things that touch each, touch each other the fact that they are touching, does it make it nonlinear? And contact is like, let's say that there are two and a half things that are nonlinear. It's contact, nonlinear material, and nonlinear geometry, contact is a half of it. And if you have like a semantic discussion on scientific conference, that's like, oh, a linear contact and nonlinear contact, and which one is which one, and when it becomes linear and nonlinear, it's, mm. uh, it's a funny thing, but not very important practically.